In the world of One Piece, there are these strange abilities called Devil Fruit abilities given to the eaters of that specific Devil Fruit. It's said to give those eaters vast abilities while cursing them to never be able to swim again, ever. Now, some of the most formidable, interesting, and impactful characters in One Piece have these said Devil Fruit abilities. However, we are not here to talk about any of those characters. We're actually here to talk about Roronoro Zoro and how his swords are actually his Devil Fruit ability. So make sure you stick around, subscribe, and share with a friend because we're getting really in depth on this one, guys. So buckle your seatbelts. So Zoro has wielded a plethora of different swords throughout the show. However, we're only going to focus on the ones with actual lore behind them and the ones that he actually cares about and, you know, reveres that have a backstory to them. We're not going to focus on swords he might have picked up or used for a couple of episodes or a couple of chapters just to, you know, fulfill a purpose. So those swords being namely respectively in order, Waro Ichimonji, Yubashiri, Sendai Kitetsu or Kitetsu 3, Shushui, and Enma. Those are the swords that we'll be talking about today. Wado Ichimonji, meaning straight line through the path of harmony. This sword was the sword passed down to Zoro, actually given to Zoro from Koshiro, who's actually his first trainer in the dojo when he's a young child. The sword was actually first supposed to be meant for Kuina. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. That was the girl that Zoro trained with in the dojo, and she was actually meant to be stronger than Zoro, technically, because she he never was able to beat her. Obviously, she was older than him, but he was never able to beat her, and becoming the world's greatest swordsman was her dream, because being a girl, I guess that gave her the chip on the shoulder, but due to her untimely death, the sword was passed down to Zoro, and then her dream of becoming the world's greatest swordsman was passed down to Zoro as well, because he promises to fulfill her dream. This is the sword that Zoro has used the most, and to this day, he still has it, so it's probably his most important sword, I would say. Also, Easter egg, someone tells him in the Wano arc, he basically meets someone that was with Otama-chan, and he says that the sword that he later acquires from Komorosaki, which we'll to get into, is actually a sword crafted by the same person. So Wado Ichimonji and the sword that he gets later, which I'm going to mention, is crafted by the same person. So then he poses the question in episode 1059, he was like, what is the Land of Wano sword doing in the East Blue where he grew up? So it's interesting, just know that we're going to get a lot more information information on Zoro's swords going further and this is actually what prompted me to make this video. The next sword on our list was Yubashiri and this is one of the 50 skillful grade swords. The 50 skillful grade blades are blades of a very high quality basically. You have your skillful grade blades, then you have your supreme grade blades, and then you have your great grade blades as well. Since there are 50 skillful grade blades, there are 12 supreme grade blades, and then there are 21 great grade blades. I'm guessing it goes skillful, then great, then supreme. Back to the sword. So Yubashiri literally meaning snow run or snow chaser. Yubashiri was one of the 50 skillful grey blades and Zoro got this sword actually from Ippon Matsu. He was a swords clerk in Logtown which is actually where Luffy is from. He gave it to Zoro after Zoro did this whole like cool curse thing. He tested his luck basically against a cursed sword which is the sword we're actually going to be getting to next and that's how Ippon Matsu gave him the sword for free. But after being damaged at the hands of Shu, Zoro left that remains of that sword in Thriller Bark, which is basically the Moria arc where he fought, where they all fought Moria and the big giant oars. The next sword on our list is Kitetsu 3. The meaning for Kitetsu is literally Demon Splitter, so you know this is going to be a cool ass sword. But basically, this sword was also obtained in Logtown in that same shop from Ippon Matsu. Um, Zoro was just basically getting a bargain sale, two for one, I guess. He was just, you know, he got lucky that day. And it was a cursed sword, so no one wanted to buy it. It was literally just sitting in a barrel of swords, and no one wants to buy it. But Zoro said his luck is greater than any curse, so he tries, he does this thing where he throws the sword in the air, and he's like, if my arm gets chopped off and the sword's not for me his arm is fine so he keeps the sword another thing i want to remember is why was he hanging out with tashiki chan which is basically she was the vice captain she worked under basically captain smoke you remember him from the navy captains i'm pretty sure he becomes like a vice admiral later after the time skip but yeah i mean zoro always had a way with girls even if they were the enemy they kind of always like gravitate towards him so i was just recalling i don't remember why or what happened in the story of why they were hanging out but maybe she didn't know he was a pirate yet whatever the case was zoro is really a ladies man it's very cool that zoro is able to sense the sword wherever he goes because of its curse and another 
another thing that's interesting so remember what i said about kitetsu so basically kitetsu was also crafted by a wano great swordsmith kozuki sukiyaki oh so i guess he's if you say kozuki he's related to odin and them i'm just realizing this now and it was meant to be an imitation of a different sword so even though it's a lower grade sword because it was of great craftsmanship it's still a very powerful sword wow sorry guys so i just did my research and yeah it was basically made by odin's father which is really crazy how fate brings all these characters together yeah this sword was created by odin's father example of how powerful it is as a sword is basically when zoro was fighting ryuma she Tsuki, which is basically the spirit of the great swordsman, Zoro's sword was still able to hold up against a great great sword, which and his sword is only a Meito, which is basically uh, just a normal great sword, not as good. But it, he did comment that his sword might break if the fight continued. And that segues me perfectly into the next sword, which is Shusui. Shusui is a black blade and one of the 21 great swords. Now, the reason that I even mentioned the black blade part is because the special carbon receptive methane of bladesmithing used for samurai swords is like kind of what gives them their legendary sword status. And for reference, basically Yoru, the sword of Dracul Mihawk, is another black blade. So that's why Shusui is so important. It's also the national treasure of the land of Wano, and it was buried with the hero Ryuma until Gekko Moria came and stole it. And then he gave the sh he also stole the shadow somehow and gave it to a skeleton, and that's how Zoro ended up fighting that boss. But Zoro, after defeating that skeleton or defeating that shadow, was then able to claim the sword for himself. So yeah, not much else to say about that sword. I really liked its design, and I kind of wanted him to keep it. I wanted him to keep it along with the sword that's coming next, but he doesn't, and it's cool. I think he got a fair trade, but I want him to keep both and just be tough as possible. Like, have as many cursed and famous swords, you know what I mean? But, you know what I mean? You can't, can't have everything. And last, but very not least, also, I'm sure he'll get more swords as time goes on or replace whatever swords. We have Enma, which is one of the 21 great, great swords. It's interesting because Zoro still hasn't even wielded a supreme sword yet. So we know that with time, he's going to get even more powerful when he gets even better swords to play with. So Enma is the name of personification of death in the Japanese religion, the Shinto religion or Shinto mythology. It was the Japanese name for Yama, the Hindu, Buddhist, and Chinese god who presided over hell. So basically, his sword is the god of death, basically. So this sword remember i was mentioning it earlier in the video this sword enma and wado ichimonji were crafted by the same guy shimotsuki kozaburo and he was it was created in wano and zoro was thinking back he was like how did a katana from wano end up in the east blue and that's a good point and i can't wait for them to expand on that in the one piece anime so the sword was actually originally odin's and he was super powerful with it like for a long time i thought odin was a pushover but when you go watch his fight with kaido you know that odin do not play no game games like for real he gives it up but yeah the sword was basically odin's at first when he passed it was given to his daughter hiyori or better known as komarasaki and she would later give the sword to zoro because basically he had wano's natural treasure which is sushui su shushui and no one knew where it was but zoro comes into the land of wano literally a random pirate and he's like just parading around with the sword and then so he he had a standoff with this guy which i'm pretty sure was the spirit of it wasn't a spirit actually his name was yukimaru but he was was a fox named Onimaru and he was disguising himself as the protector of the mountain and pr trying to protect so he saw Zoro with that sword and he took it back and he basically wasn't letting Zoro have it but after some banter and some talk then Hiyori is able to convince Zoro to just take Emma instead he's like it's a better sword and as we see it, I, I will say it's a better sword because it allows Zoro's hockey to be a lot stronger but it's a sword that needs to be tamed like it's a lot wilder but I just find it cool that someone as legendary as Odin has now his swords are in the hand of like my favorite character which is Zoro but I'll be real as far as ranking the swords I think they're all it's about the wielder as we have seen now so it doesn't really matter what sword I think they're all pretty cool as far as design I want to say Emma is probably one of the coolest I just like the, the three circle um heel that he has but I also like Wado Ichimonji is because it's the sword that Zoro has had the longest and probably the most it means the nearest and dearest to his heart so that's why I appreciate that sword the most but this was an interesting video I just wanted to take a little break from you know doing the normal one piece content that we do and i just want to break down an interesting costume that i really enjoy because i'm really into samurais and things like that and i might be doing more videos like this more so let me know in the comments what you guys like but this is it for the video guys and remember to as always find your zen your final form and i'll see you next time okay let's go uh, yeah. take it easy take it easy take it easy